the fourth final and deciding heat of the BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh world championships. We're at Innsbruck in Austria, 20 sleds to go, and two men tied at the top of the pile as they battle for glory. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stunning Eagles track over the Olympic city of Innsbruck. Martin Haven and alongside me, John Morgan, ready to call the action. And John, this track always produces tight results, but boy, a tie into the final heat for the gold medal. Pretty dramatic setting, that's for sure. We had FT and Alex Bowman, though. They were in fourth overnight, and uh, the guy who won, won this track before, he won the event St. Moritz last week. He's only 1,200s out of the top position. Don't count this Swiss athlete out. Francisco Friedrich, Torsten Vargas. Well, they've won the world championships two of the last three years. The only time, not the Olympic year. They were 1500s off the pace. Friedrich's been nursing a groin pull. He won the first three events of the year and then has been on this injury list for a while, but he just smoked the field in the second or the third run. And he tied this guy, Lochner and Bloom, who had the best starts, going away in the first two heats, but in the third heat, Friedrich caught him. They're only 100 separated to start. If that happens again in the fourth heat, Friedrich will win again. But if Lochter can get away with a 5 six hundreds better start time, he could capture his first ever world championship. Three sleds covered by 12 hundreds of a second. This is always a tight track and it could not be any tighter at the top of the pile. Oscar Smelbardis under real pressure from Great Britain's Bruce Tasker for that fourth position. Just 200 separate them. Chris Spring, Yun Jung Won of Korea have swapped places in the last run and there are tight battles all the way down our top 20. In 20th position will be Monaco's Rudy Rinaldi. He goes off first, followed by Stephen Holcomb, and then down through the rest of the order. Nick Polignato missed the cut by one hundredth of a second after three trips, and he and the rest of the field will join the spectators' trackside. The athletes who go in the final 20 sleds getting ready at the start area at the top of the track. Plus four this morning, ice temperature hovering around minus two degrees. There is Oscars Melbardis trying to hang on to fourth position. And Team Great Britain, Bradley Hall and Ben Simons, Bruce Tasker and Joel Fearon both firmly inside the top 20. And Tasker and Fearon having the ride of their lives. There is Francesco Friedrich, double world champion. And he is the man who could perhaps make the big move in the final heat to snatch gold away from the overnight leader. Our start list, 20 down to one we go. Rinaldi, Holcomb, Kibermanis, Kazianov, Hall, followed by Cunningham, Zalems, Arndt, Stolnev, and Nico Wald, who was first on the ice at the beginning of his competition yesterday. Then Benny Meyer inside the top 10 for Austria. Justin Cripps, Rika Peter, Yunjon Wan, our World Cup points leader, all the way down to our joint leaders. Watched by Prince Albert of Monaco, Rudy Rinaldi and Boris Vand, the 22-year-old duo, getting ready for their final slide in this World Championships. Can't drop out of the top 20, and they'll need a big run to overhaul Stephen Holcomb of the USA, their nearest rival. Prince Albert looking on. He's a very talented young driver, Rudy Rinaldi. Finished with a medal on this track at the Junior Olympic Games in 2012. Boris Vand. He's right up there with one of the biggest people in the break with position. Good athlete. Well, their starts, two 5.16s, a 5.18, and now a 5.17. So four pushes within 300 of a second of each other. Very consistent. Rinaldi's been that 15, 21st, 22nd, last two heats. So his first heat was marvelous, but his last two heats has fallen off the mark a little bit, but still a top 20. He's to try and accomplish that. Let's see if he can dip inside the 52 second mark. He has the best ice to deal with. He gets some good speed opportunities here. He's had it pointed in the right direction on this very short 1,220 meter track, 52-18. Well, that's not bad. He's had three sled three times down the track, all within 20 hundreds of each other. So that's four times down the track. So that's pretty consistent. Yep. Still just 22 years old, this duo, and definitely on the up top 20 in the world in a field of 34, 36 sleds to start with. 
the start. Watch when he gets in now. Look at the runner tips as they come out of the drive lines. You're going to see the sled drift to the left. He should be in control of the sled right there. Look at that. Oh, catches his foot on one of the bungee straps. Yeah. That's a no-no. A real no-no. And then here, exit of nine, one of the pivotal parts of the track. He's coming over in a little bit of a skid. Front and back bunks hit. Likes taking that uniform off pretty quick. Yeah. It's hot work at the top of the track. It might be hovering just above zero. Everybody in the fans is uh, wrapped up nice and warm. And there are lots of them at the top and at the finish line. Big grandstands here to greet Stephen Holcomb and Carlo Valdez for Team USA. Holcomb only in 19th place. Start time deficiency on a track where it's all about the start. Holcomb struggling all year long with a thigh strain. Picks it up right at the beginning of the autumn. Worst start of the competition. Wow. Uh, Holcomb was silver medal last week at the World Champion, or at the World Cup in St. Moritz. Well, that's a 16, 1700 meter track. Here is a 1220 meter track, so you can get away with a start deficiency in St. Moritz. Not here at Eagles, the Olympic track in 76. 64, and this track here has got more of an emphasis in the start time than any other facility. And Holcomb might lose to the Montegasque at the bottom unless he can find, oh, he's got it back. Well, he's been flying at, you know, the bottom part of the track, but he runs out of track. He just needs another 200 meters of track. The fastest of all the training runs, but couldn't replicate it in the race. Everybody else went quicker. The USA didn't. They take the lead away from the Monegasques. Holcomb slated to drive in the team race later on this afternoon. Surprising with his injury. Yeah, and then four-man week starts on Monday. You wonder how much more punishment the body can take. Well, still to him to have a gold medal in Lake Placid and two-man bobsled, and to have a medal last week in San Moritz with those start times, but the guy can still do like that sign just said, the X-Drive. I mean, his... Driving is still there, his eyes and his hands. Look at the back end, ooh, a little bit of a mistake there, a little tap into curve eight. That's on the exit of Kreisel to seven to eight. That wasn't the optimum line, but he gets a chance to enjoy himself in the leader's box, the former Kimmy and world champion in 2012. Race led by Stephen Holcomb. Next up, Oscars Kibermanis, first of three Latvian sleds in the top 20. This young brakeman, Matis Miknis, behind him. Kibermanis, one of the fastest starters among the top two or three in most of his getaways, but languishing down in 18th place. But he has been getting a handle on this sled as the competition has progressed. It's a brand new chassis. Could be a big step forward in bobsled design. Well, doesn't matter if you got the best start and the best chassis. If you can't drive it, you're relegated back to 18th place. This kid is a stud in the first 50 meters. Another decathlete. Seems like the whole Latvian team are all decathletes. Huge start, 505. 2,500 is better than Holcomb. That means it's 5,400 south. That'll get out to about 700 at the next clock. But then it's a, from that point on, then it's the drive. 55, he should have been on more than that. I don't think he could lose his place to Holcomb down here unless he's sideways on the exit of curve nine, which is coming up right here. He's gonna have to crash it to give away a yeah. big advantage. Half a second up. Tough season for this kid, though. Third season they've had him on tour with a lot of hope and promise because of his athleticism. But he did pretty good in the four-man last week at St. Moritz. Got a smile out of him with a seventh-place finish. Well, Holcomb's man. gone. Foreman might be more to his liking. Interesting, brand new development at the front end of this sled. Melbardis not using it, Salim's not using it. They're giving it to their third string guy to try. So, you know, he's developing a new sled in the World Championships. Just well, he's, been in a slump. he's been in a slump all year. He has indeed. I don't think it has anything to do. Watch the break, but here. Watch his head. Look at that. that <laughs> look at that go down. That's, what a shot by our team. Look at the runners on the left, though, not yeah. touching the ice. He's carrying it, not pushing it. I mean, you're talking about two of the best athletes combination in the field, the best teams. You know, they have one of the top starts, second best start in the first run. Look at the runners, though. Five, uh, out of the groove. Six, They're still seven, seven, 
that eight steps. He's steps. carrying the sled. You're supposed to be pushing it. Pushing it. Yeah, he's got a lot of nose pressure. Yeah. Rufal Smar from Oscars Keeper Manis leads with 17 to go. Alexander Kazyanov of Russia at the top of the ice. 17th in three heats of four of our World Championship for two-man bobsled. And has busted the zip on his race suit. It's just one of those days, I guess. Well, it's one of those days at the start, too. He's like Hulk. 28th best start in the first run, or 27th in the third run. He's going to get nine. High 20s, He's like Holcomb, 531. I mean, Holcomb finished third in Sochi at the Olympic Games with about the fourth or fifth best start. Kasanov had the sixth or seventh best start, finished fourth. And now it's just, uh, it's hard to look at these two talented guys that because of the track, with the emphasis on the start, they just are not competitive here. Track and play on Chun. Well, I gotta believe he's gonna have a lot of this personality. Of the Innsbruck track just a little longer, which is gonna put not as much of emphasis on the start, but still a major component. So it's quite a lot longer. 1200 meters isn't much of a box lane track these days. It's 1220. Yeah. It's still short as one. We can beat on. Yeah. By a long way. Well, it's, it was designed when box legs were a lot slower. He drops one spot there. Yeah. Slips behind Cuba Manis. So another Russian's best hope. And he's, there's one more Russian driver to come, but for Kasanov to be back here. Three tenths slower than Kiba Manis on that run alone. Well, the start time was suspect. The drive down, doesn't matter. When you're that far behind at the start, you know, the lines are curve 10, watch your eyes. You see how high they get there. I mean, everything here, everything's quiet. The movement in the sleds, everything is. But the start time's also pretty quiet. Well, with a start time like that, you're bringing a knife to a gunfight, aren't you? And it just isn't helping. New race suit required and uh, a fresh attitude for next week. Great Britain's Bradley Hall and Ben Simons. Now, there'll be a lot of people watching back home wishing them well. Came from 18th overnight up to 16th position. They're close here to moving up some more. They're only 100th behind Cunningham yeah. and Zalims, yeah. who are tied. Two sleds coming up, yeah. yeah. Well, bobsledding is about consistency. These two guys have got 5-14, 5-14, 5-14 at the start in the first three heats. Nice load from oh, Ben Semtex, Simon, they decided to go better by 100. Another impressive, no matter where he finishes here, it's an impressive performance. Now, this first World Championships. First time they've had good ice. Beyond, uh, apart from this, they've been coming out in the teens and 20s on the ice. Now they're the fifth sled out of the shed. Good chance to lay one down and move up three or four spots. He's plus six. That's relative to the start. He stopped the bleeding here, so he should get this down a single two or three here. Yeah. And then with a good exit here, he should be in green numbers by the first lap. Get off the walls. Should see green numbers here pretty quick. Three hundredths of a second. How close no. will he get? Oscar's Keeper Manis could hold no. to the lead. Keeper yeah. Manis has a starting for the run. Thirteen. And Bradley six. Hall slips one by six hundredths of a second. Wow, where did that go away? I mean, we saw him late on 13, but his mistake, he was, he was plus six and plus three as he got down there, curve nine, curve nine. The straightaway didn't look too bad, but... Well, that's the second fastest run, but Kiba Manis will likely overhaul Nick Cunningham and Uga Zalims as well. And it's not Keeper the bounds of possibility that these two guys can too. This is down the bottom part of the track where he was a little late. Watch him here in this curve. This is 12. Watch the back end here. 13. And there's the airborne. Is he hitting get on the crossed over on the take on too early? And a lot of friction on that take on. And the ice is probably a lot faster and slicker than he's had at any stage during the competition. So just a little bit off the timing down at the bottom. Second place, 600s behind the leader, Oscars Kiba Manis ahead of Brad Hall. One of many ties in the competition here in Eagles in Austria in the two-man bobsled competition. Nick Cunningham and Ugas Allen's Cunningham for the USA goes first. Want to say hi to Casey Wickline's wife, Alexis, 
Up at 0 Dark 100, let's hope there's some flowers on the way as well for Valentine's Day. Cutting in the Boise State product. Start time. They were great training all week long. I don't know what's happened to them out here. Well, everybody else stepped up. There was a lot of, you know, they were starting in the low 20s, but Ben Hefty was starting in the high 30s. Same with the Latvians and the Germans. Well, it's very perplexing because on a short 1240 meter track in Winterberg, Germany, earlier this year, Cunningham finished fourth. Third place at the moment. Oh, so behind Kuba Manis and Bradley Hall, he could drop two spots here. That tap right there, the exit of nine, it's not going to help. Bergelin third. Flying. Closing up. Flying down here. Could move up into second spot. Going to run out of track. Look at that. No. He's ran out of track. 300s behind, so he's ahead of Bradley Hall by 300s. Loses one spot. You know, he did it another 50 meters of track. Yep. Frustration boiling over with Nick Cunningham. Very promising week of training. Yeah. Watch the cohesion of getting in these little small cylinders. Some people call them bathtubs. Casey Wickline, nice technique there. In gets those big arms and shoulders. Now he's got to get out of that aerodynamic profile, which he does well. You don't see him back there at all. This little tap there, yeah. sneaks. Look at the runners. We're now starting to skid. That might have been worth a couple hundreds for Nick. Yeah. Always smiling, though. And from Monterey, California, lies in second spot as Oscar's Kiba Manis leads. Cunningham was tied with Ugi's arms of Latvia after the three heats that they have completed so far. They were tied oh, after yeah. two oh, to the hundreds. They set exactly the same downtime in the last trip to still be tied to the hundredth of a second. If they keep this going, then I may start predicting lottery numbers. Well, another good starting team. The guy down this on the back. He's been around for about 15 years, and he is still in that stud category. That guy is big and fast. And here they post the 509, only second to their teammates who are at the bottom in the winner's box. But Zalmans has had trouble down the bottom part of the track also. Especially in the last team when he had the sixth best start time and 17th best downtime. Kiba Manis was a tenth behind Zalmans after three heats. And oh, they are now tied for the lead, so Zalmans has lost time. Can he just creep back in front of his teammate? If he doesn't, Kiba Manis will have a big smile on his face. He's equal with Cunningham right here. Cunningham at better speed, slip his airborne into the 13th curve. Six or seven. Three, three times, times tied to Cunningham. With Cunningham. Three heats in a row. That's insane. Kiba Manis has the lead and climbs two spots. Give him credit. He was really <laughs> bleeding that time on the bottom part of the track. And then as he got near the 13 curve, get on there early, slide went airborne, and he didn't lose much right there in the last 50 meters. But with the start time he's got, watch this. So look at the heads, the transition. There's the exit of the curve. Then this second of the three curves, this is the take on, exit. There's the take on, watch he goes in early. Boom, slide goes a little bit airborne, but the, he didn't get hurt there. He should have lost more time, I thought, and hung in there, tied Cunningham. Oscar Skibermanis leads with seven of our 20 sleds down. First of our German drivers is Max Arndt. The four-man world champion will head into his favorite event next week with Kevin Kuska fit on the back handles. If you recognize that name, he's got three gold medals and a silver over three Olympic games at Andre Lange. I, I call him the beast. So fit, so big. So technically proficient. Watch this huge man get in, get down. Look how quickly he's in and down on that sled. 5.13, their best start of the competition. Aren't the world champion in four-man Bob, two of the last three years. Only the Olympic year, he didn't get up there any place, but uh, favored to win next week. He's the World Cup leader in points. He sort of uses the two-man as a warm-up. 
300s. Well, the way he drives. He's still there, though. He was 1500s in front of Kiba Manis from the first hit, so he's still behind Kiba Manis in this run. Yeah, but he's still got time in the bank here. 1200s to 15. Yeah, he'll be the leader. Question is, is this good enough to move up two or three places? But remember the name, Max Art. You'll see it next weekend. He'll be one of the favorites to win. Christoph Lyon, his coach, who's got more. The second most world championships in bobsled history, only behind the legendary Eugenio Monti, who's got eight. Longin's got five. Max on Kevin Kuska with the fastest trip of this heat so far. 51-84. And they take the lead from look at Oscar's keeper. Look at Kuska. Look at there's the head. If you see the eyes pointing back to the camera, that's the clean and jerk almost what you do look at the step look at the power step look at this big horse start to lumber and i say big he's probably about 245 and uh, i would call it lean. it's all about power everything in bobsledding it's not about the upper body strength it's about from the hips down that's the new philosophy of a brakeman in the start that's what i'm being told Max Art, his time is coming next weekend. Yep, he could repeat his world championship win from last year. 12th off the first of our, after the third of our four heats, Alexei Stulnev and Max Belugin, the second of our Russian sleds. And they were 300s in front of current leader Germany's Max Art. They've had 20, 22, 23 starts. They're one of the worst starting teams in the top 12, though, so give him credit. He's got a good drive down the track. He's got to get the teams here to have a chance to do something in 21. It's, been, it's about what he's been doing. And body's been flying on the bottom part of the track, so if he can stop bleeding here pretty quick. He's 10 hundreds behind here, maybe. 14. That stays at 14 or 15. He's got a chance to catch Hart on the bottom because he's been great. Last 200 meters, 16. That's so to me, that stops the bleeder. Here he comes. Look at the runner tips. Little touch, speeds, good. He's got a lot, a perfect right here to have a chance. 10. He's going to run out of track. Might get it down to single digits. Yep. He's ran out of track. Needed another 20 meters. Look at Pierre Ludus at the left. A frustrating two-day competition for his German team. Russian. Russian team, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Yeah, I gotta be well corrected there. Misled by please, yeah. Please. Oh, yeah. Better me than Pierre. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Still there, 400s behind Max Arndt. Look at the, the X drive is what we like to say. He's way above that. He should be almost right above it. But he can't really knock him on the bottom part of the track. If they start the race from the Exeter Chrysler down, he's right up there in the top five with the lines. But his nemesis is that first 50 meters. Max Arndt leading then with 11 sleds to go. We will have a German leader after this. Next up, Nico Walter with Christian Poser behind him. First man on the ice to start the World Championship competition. And he has slipped down to 11th spot. This is a very disastrous world championship for Nico Walter. Well, like Arndt, he's a real four-man specialist, but he needs a little more at the start, maybe. He's second in World Cup points. He's not a four-man specialist. He's... How many wins has he had? He's had a fourth, third, yeah. a second, a second, a sixth, and a third. He's done all the races, and he's been fit, and that's what's and been Arndt him up. hasn't even been close to the podium, so this, for him to have the 17th best time of the second run, and he's second in World Cup points, I see that's bad World Championships, and he's, you know, he's just looking here to get out of this slide and get to the four-man. He's got a couple wins in four-man. 2,400s over Arndt from three heats. He's down to 1,800s in front. The gap's down to 14. At this rate, he'll go behind Art. Keeps it at 12, he'll be okay. Nine, he's gonna get dicey here. These kids need some confidence going into the World Championship four-man competition next week, and if he doesn't finish ahead of his teammate, he won't have it, and this doesn't look good.
He'll be in the red at the line. 400 isn't enough in the labyrinth. 100 of a second. Wow. Well, it was a 52.07 slide. Max Arndt, a 51.84. If I'm Nico Walter, I don't watch any video of this two-man competition. Look, you can see it. This is a guy, former luge athlete, second year in the sport on the national level. Start, I mean, he gets decent starts. Christian Poser, that's Jamie Grubel, Poser of the United States, husband, they got married. One of the number of firemen in the field. Good technique. Or the sled, does it drift to the left a little bit on us? No, here. Watch the back end of the sled. Did well on the bottom part of the track. That's good transition on the bottom. Yeah. Nico. Nice. Real golden moment could come in the four-man competition. Half the field down, half to go. Nico Valtelis by a hundredth of a second from Max Arndt with Alexei Stulnev of Russia lying in third. Ten sleds still to come here in Austria. Tenth, a great position for Benny Meyer of Austria in this final round of the two-man world championships. Martin Haven and John Morgan watching the action. With Meyer and his brakeman, Markus Sammer, in their rented Swiss sled. There's his father in the back left, Manfred Meyer. Benny shocked the bobsled world last weekend at Saber Ritz when he won the silver medal in the World Cup, which was also the European Championships. It was Austria's first world cha or European Championship medals in 17 years. This kid's 21 years old. Next day we arrived in Innsbruck, his picture's on the front page of the paper. I asked him about it, he said, the last time my picture was in the paper was how bad Austrian bobsled was. Chasing down Justin Cripps of Canada, who was three hundredths of a second in front of him. They've got their fastest stars in the competition. Pretty good lead here, too, and he's good at the bottom part of the track. Needs to use the Austrian shortcut down at the bottom. He's only 21 years old. 2700 up, 31 he's up flying. on Nico Walter. Flying run from Benny Meyer. Hey, for him to beat two Germans is oh, unbelievable. That's Third a good best one. time of the run. Look at his father, Franz Joseph Hoffman, on the right. That may be the last real quick one we get until we get down to our top three or four. Saw his sister there with the flag. She's the only one of the family that doesn't slide. His father did, both his brothers slide skeleton, which is what he started off as as well. We'll see his brother later today in the team competition. And then he both are the same team, I think. Look at the rudder tips, little mistake here, but he doesn't try and steer away. Good speed on the bottom. He accelerated away. Important for him to beat Max on. And Nico Walter, that's quite an accomplishment. I think Raphael Meyer is not, he's definitely not competing in the team's competition. I think he may not be in the world championships. I think his place may have been taken by Alexander Auer, another famous name. Yeah. We'll get to that later. Well, there's the gauntlet thrown down on the ice for Justin Cripps to pick up and run with. Cripps with Alex Kopax behind him. This six foot four guy on the back of the brakes. Not many people make Justin Cripps look like he's quite short, but Kopax is in that crowd. Tenth best time in the third run. Sort of dashed his metal hopes. And this is a formidable Canadian team. These guys have paired up pretty well this year to start. Cripps was seventh fastest in the first heat. He needs another one like that. 5'10. They're going for it. They need better than that. 5'10 again. So five. They've done 5'11, 5'11, 5'10, 5'10. That's consistency. He lost all his time and last heat up here at the top of the track. And I looked at the charts and the numbers. Oh, he's down a one. He only had a 400 lead. He just beat Meyer and start considerably. And Meyer was. Electric on the bottom part of the track. He only had started Benny Meyer by a hundred. Down a hundred, down a hundred. He just keeps it. Yeah, still down a hundred. That means he's not beating any more time. Good lines down here. He needs it. That's a great line out of nine. Next clock will tell us right away where it is. Teddy for the lead. Dealing with a hundred of a second down here. Who's this, it going to be? This is for a space in the top nine. Oh, and he's in got front it. by four hundreds. Hey. <laughs> well, obviously, for the Canadian coaching staff, Tom Delhunt and Stefan Bosch, that's an important placing. It puts two Canadians in the top ten. Yep. 
At the moment, Chris Spring still has to go, but at least one is in. Benny Meyer will be at least a top 10 finisher. This has been a good pairing, these two guys yeah. right here. They're getting stronger and stronger. Lots of fans here from different nations. Look at Cripps, six foot three. Track a field background. Look at the hands. He struggled a little bit to keep the, like a clean and jerk. That's what the uh, bobsledders all do. Look at the stride on him. I'd like to try to say not to get so much air time, but there are leaders with a lot to go. Everybody at home, thanks for watching. Martin Haven, John Morgan watching the action in Eagles in Austria with eight sleds to go in the two-man world championships. Final fourth drive down the ice for Rick Peter and Thomas Amrein. Your race leader is Canada's Justin Cripps and Alexander Kopacz. Now, can Rico find a little bit to move up? He's two tenths away from the sled in front. So the best he can really hope for is to hold his top eight finish. Starts the best start of the competition. And then 16, 17, 17, then that 15. Rico won a gold medal in Whistler in the two-man event, but with that other Swiss guy around, his hefties around, Rico doesn't seem to perform at the same level. He likes it when hefties not around, and he's Swiss one, and he's done great. I mean, he's ranked fifth in World Cup points. He's got a couple medals. Big scare for Rico Peter. This might open the door for Justin Cripps. He only had seven hundreds in hand. And that has all gone away. Down to four, though. Oh, Cripps back. holding his breath at the bottom of the track. Now he's gone out. And oh, the he's line, he hits the hit wall. before the finish line. Yikes. Wow. That's... Rico's had a good year, but that's something he's not going to want to remember right there. That's the first time he's not been in a 51s. Wow, last hit down 51.65, that was 4,400 slower. The start, well, you know, it's middle of the field. See if they get in, get down. Alex Bowman in the back, he's probably about 225, 230. Rico is, he's in early enough where he's gonna get his hands in the D-rings before the sled gets out of the grooves, but his, his mistake was down there in the finish curve. Look at Bowman get in there. This is okay but not too bad, but that finish curve right here. Now watch him hit before the red line. Uh, you can't see it there. But he hit before, no, right on the first line, but really? I don't know. Yes, yeah. wasn't a good, well, lost leader, a lot of time. Lead had gone with that skid off the Kreisel, and he just further buried himself. Yun Jung won a career seventh after three heats, race led by Justin Cripps of Canada. This man is leading our World Cup two-man standings, and unless there's some catastrophe, some meltdown in Koenigsee in two weeks, he will win the Crystal Globe. He usually has some of the best starts in the 5-14 the last run. 5-18, so it might be something wrong with these two guys, because they've been lighting it up at the start. It's one of the reasons why he's leading the World Cup. His worst finish he's had was a ninth at the second Whistler event the day after he'd won the historic first ever Korean gold medal. What he's done for bobsledding as we go into the Asian market is unbelievable. The press the sport is now getting can be attributed to this man's success, his team's success. 1900s, the gap is coming down, but it should be enough. He's got a lot of time in the bank here. Just been there at 9 to 10. Still got 19. And this is where he's fast. He just hasn't been good at the start like he's been all season. Skids across the line, 52.02. It's a nice best time of the run. See yeah. what happens? Anybody who goes early in this track gets a chance for better times. We had 3,600s over Crips. That came down to only 1,900s at the line. And again, down in the 52s. The start. You know, these Koreans, they each gained, I bet you, 25 pounds in the last three years of muscle, bulk. Look at the strides, power. It's all about hips down. Here, this is the slingshot effect you want to try and have in the exit of Kreisel into curve eight, the next curve. Look, he's got a little skid going there. 
could saw it, that that's not the best optimum line. Yunjin won a career, the race leader, six to go. Chris Spring of Canada, Lascelles Brown, sixth place after three of our four heats. The focus of Breckman, Lascelles Brown, really clear in that shot. 45 hundreds off the lead, fifth position in front of them is 30 hundreds off the lead. They need to have a huge run here. And they're only 6 hundreds in front of current leader Yun Jung Won of Korea. Watch out. The king, as we call him on the brakes, Lucillus Brown, could pop off a 5'7", 5'8", 5'11". So they've had, just like their teammates, their teammates had 5'11", 5'11", 5'10", 5'10", of four heats. That's great consistency. And the Springer looking for his best world championship finish ever. His brakeman has spent the whole week trying to figure out how to push the sled with both handles. King is so wide, the back of this sled, OB1, is so narrow, he's had to have a sprinter stance on the blocks. They won the event in Whistler. Looks like the final of the two two-man events that they had up there is Spring's first ever gold medal. From 600s ahead of one, he's now a quarter of a second up on the Korean. 29 This is a great run. Flying, Obi-Wan has this the force. Be. He's real close to Bell wow. He can get the fourth. Look at that, 51-74. That is the fastest trip down the ice in this fourth and final run well, so far. So much for the track not having any speed in it. Wow, Obi-Wan does Pick it again. Back. Fish first, or excuse me, best finish ever for Chris Sprang and that 42-year-old oh young specimen he's got in the back of oh. Sellers Brown. These two have made such a difference this weekend. Good transition. That, he, he flew all the way down the track, trying to think he had eighth in the second run, eighth in the third run. He won't be eighth in this run. Two Canadians, one born in Australia, one in Jamaica, leading with five to go. Five sleds remain in the two-man bobsleigh world championships in Innsbruck, Austria. Sit up and pay attention back home in Great Britain. Bruce Tasker and Joel Fearon in their first ever world championships with Bruce driving are lying in fifth position, just two hundreds of fourth. This could be the best British finish on this Innsbruck track area since 65, yeah, 65. when Nash and Dixon won the yeah. World Championship gold medal here after the World Championship gold in 64. But that was on the national track. Yeah. Of course, this got dug up. It's the refrigerator track for the 76th game. What a great start for them, 508. Fastest of the competition so far. Biggest surprise of the competition, no doubt. Bruce Tasker. Brakeman moved into the driver's seat last year on a sporadic level. He has brought it here in this competition. And he'll be back pushing the four-man sled next week as well. What a nice looking drive, another great one. 2800 up on Chris Spring. This is all about attacking oh, Bell Bars. Still before, flying. Still picking up wow. speed. Watch the excitement here at the bottom for the British team. What a run, 51-62. That's 1,200 quicker than Spring has just gone. Oh, he knows that was a good one. See how tall he is. <laughs> I don't think he expected to be here. Watch the start here. Oh, their hands collided a little bit there. But we have Even to go so back. 508. I don't know if another British team has done this good. Of course, the World Championships haven't been here since 93. Yeah. And I know there wasn't any, no, it wasn't any British in the top five then. Look at the start. Great proficiency. Great technique. From Pembrokeshire and Wales, Bruce Tasker. From Coventry is Joel Fear on his brakeman. And they are leading with only four sleds remaining. Now, I don't suppose that Oscar's Melbardis feels any external pressure. 
but he has enough from inside to keep him going. Damas Driskins is Brakeman with an Achilles injury. Melbardis aggravated a slip disc injury uh, early in the new year and they has been own, trying to recover from that. They own the track record at the start, which is a 4.98. And nobody's been close to that, but these two guys are operating at about 80%. At best. So five six five seven. It's been the norm for them. Let's see what they got left. The two huge monsters from Latvia. Seven. They lead by three hundreds. The Latvian sleds have not performed well on the bottom part of the track. Albardus last year won the two-man title, the four-man title, the combined title. He must have won about nine times overall. He was in the silver medal position in the last race on this track behind the winner, Francesco Friedrich. He was in the silver medal position in the World Championships last year in two-man behind Friedrich. And he's 200 behind here. It's going to be very close. The British sled was flying at the bottom of the track. Well, he lost that time up top, but I don't think he's going to have a chance to get it back. Six hundred out. He's not going to do it. Needs a fantastic labyrinth and final corner. He was the leader. Tasker could move up again, and he does. By eight hundred in a second, they came down a tenth quicker than the Latvians. Tasker in fourth, no worse. He leads with three to go. Melbardis had the lead in this competition at the end of the first heat. And he has fallen like a stone in the second, third, and fourth runs. If you would have told me that he would finish behind Bruce Tasker, I would have bet a lot of money against that bet. Yep. Look at this. Now, the two huge, I mean, 245-pound average. Look at the size of his legs, the quads on the, both these guys. These are monsters. And they usually just blow everybody away at the start, but the injuries have subjected them to be, they're about 80, 75, 80% of what they really are. Great sportsmen, though. Three to go in the World Championships. I can barely sit still. Ben Hefty and Alex Bauman. Hefty's missed half the World Cup season, waiting for Bauman to recover from injury because without him, he knows that there's no point in turning up. Now, can this start monster close the 1200s? There's your leaders, Bruce Tasker on the left, Joel Fearon on the right. Shocking. Can Hefty get in among the leaders? 1200s cover the top three. Got to watch out here for running too far and hitting the wall before the first curve, which happens with people going for it. He gets it stunning. 508. That's better than their last start of 509. Leads by 1800s over Bruce Tasker. I don't think he's worried about the British. He's looking about, let me go try and post a fantastic time and see if these Germans can deal with the pressure. Well, his last hit of 51.37. Second best time of the run, that was. Yeah, but that was early in the run. Now he's going very late. What has the track got left? Still only 1800s up. Now 2100s over Tasker. That's not good. Got away with it. He had 1600s from the first heat. He has 2100 still. Still got 20. Ooh, he's oh, late there. Late. And this is any chance of a win. Probably going away from him. He will take a medal. 160. Okay. The well, ad hefty. Everybody was counting him out in December. He silenced the credits for the winning last week at St. Moritz. Yeah. At least a bronze medal here. Same start time as Tasker. Came oh, down two hundreds of a second quicker. Well, he's an experienced guy. Yep. His tasker's in his first world championship. Yep. <laughs> this guy's got 12 or 13, including his time as a brakeman. All right. Okay, this got out late here. So watch the runners. See that flap right there? Watch it here again. So that, that, I don't think that was the optimum line, but he got it. didn't steer. Down here on the bottom, the look how high he is here. That, that was a little suspect, but boy, that might have been the line he wanted because he crossed over into that final curve 13. And he is the leader. Okay, here we go. The World Championship comes down to two 51 second drives. Our junior world champion, Hannes Lochner and Joshua Bloom, tied for the lead with our reigning world champion. And it's Lochner and Bloom who led overnight, who go first. Didn't have a very good start, the best start of the competition, but they had 5.05. They need to get to like five flat to challenge here. 
501 there in the it second. Is. He's five dead. If he gets four or five hundreds better start than Friedrich, he's got a chance. Friedrich it's, kills him on the bottom. It is on the junior world champion versus the double world champion. This is for supremacy in Germany. 502, 501 in the first two heats. 505, conservative 505 in the third heat. That cost him his 1500s lead. Three tenths up on Hefty. It was 1200s from the first heat. Second last year in the world championships. Little bubble off the labyrinth. 2400. That's coming been... down. Yeah, that's not very good. And that opens that's the door for good. Francesco Friedrich. He'll take the lead at the end of the run, but will yeah, be enough. No, that could even be that much. It's going to be down to time. several digits. And Johannes Lindner is in front of 51.67. Wow. He's yeah. taking a medal in the senior worlds. He just didn't deliver driving, though. He's got a silver medal. Yeah, I mean, he's got, he's a young 25-year-old kid with a 20-year-old brakeman. Second year in a row, he delivers a silver medal. But that's, I don't think that's enough for the goal. Well, is there enough left in the track? What can the experience of Francesco Friedrich produce? Three years ago, he came in as the junior world champion and took the senior title. Look at the mistake here, though. This is as bad a line as we've seen in that last, on that 9 to 10. I think the pressure got to him there. That's just the bad, the worst line we've seen on the entrance to 10 in this heat. Johannes Lochner, the junior world champion with Joshua Bloom, will take at the very least a silver medal, but they led overnight. And now look at the flags for Altenberg, for pianist Francesco Friedrich. With Torsten Bloom, they won the Junior World and the Senior World title, and then they won it again last year. And this is to go for the hat trick. 5 or 6, their best start was in the last heat. I don't know if they can match it. This guy's got a real growing problem. 5 oh, 3, that's good enough to challenge, especially with the mistake that we saw Lochner make down in 9 and 10. Tied after three heats. He starts slower, so he's three hundredths of a second behind. Yeah, this will be red up here. He's seven. This will probably go to five or six at the next clock. Even if he's behind at the Chrysler, after the Chrysler, Chrysler's yeah. where Lockner made the mistake that cost him. He made, this is where the afterburners come on for Friedrich. I said I, I, I ruled him out because of his growth, but he's sitting in the sled at Whistler. Back to two hundredths. Here he comes. There are three numbers. Well, this is for the three-peat, a third consecutive world championship gold medal. We'll go to Francesco Friedrich and Torsten Largis pulling away to win by 17 hundredths of a second, fittingly with the fastest trip of the final run. It's 1-2 for Germany. Christoph Langen is jubilant. As Langen's got to watch out. Because Langen's got five world championships. This kid's got three. Already in two man and he's 25. 25 and he's a triple world champion. Yeah! And if you count the junior world title, that's four in four years. And Lochner and Bloom go to congratulate Torsten Margis. I told Margis, I said, that's too bad what you guys are going through next week in Innsbruck with the, the injury. He goes, don't count us out. I'm sure the first chance he gets to tell me about it, he will. That's his girlfriend. She gets to offer congratulations just after Johannes Lochner. Torsten, how much has he been bleeding to win this gold medal? Boy, they've oh. been through it the last month. In Whistler, he pulled the quad, or a groin muscle, Francisco did here. And the second, they pulled out of the second heat. And the next night at Whistler, they were sitting in the sled. And now, here they are. Three weeks later, world champions for the third year in four. What a stunning result. Francesco Friedrich pulled it all together and eased away from his teammate. Tied after three heats, trailing overnight. He wins by 17 hundreds on a track that benefits the faster starter. Well, if he's got nothing left for the four-man or for the team competition, it won't matter one iota. There's Johannes Lochner and Joshua Bloom, silver medalists, as well as a junior world championship title. But here is a bobsledder in the pomp of his form. What a result for Francesco Friedrich and Torsten Margis.
Well, the German crowd likes what they saw. Well, you've got to salute a fantastic race. A title race that had three different leaders. Oscars Melbardis led after the first heat. Johannes Nockler led overnight. And now Francesco Friedrich tied him after three heats to go ahead and win it from behind in the final run. And a great result for Bert Hefty, the bronze medal. Bruce Tasker in fourth, a stunning debut on the world stage from Bruce Tasker and Joel Fearon. <sighs> Time to catch your breath on this Valentine's Day. I'm sure there's an awful lot of people breathing again after watching a stunning end to this two-man race. Hi to Viv Baker, Alex Wood, Loretta Livingston, the Radio Le Mans connector. I know there's an awful lot of people watching back home to see how the Brits did. And you've got to salute two stunning winners here. Francesco Friedrich and Torsten Margis, three in a row. John, that's just an incredible legacy that they're building already. You know, and Longen won his world championships in his 30s. This kid's doing them all in his 20s. Longen was a brakeman when this kid was got three under his belt. And the way he approaches the game, he could be challenging Monty about six, eight years from now. Yeah. That's Joe from Saxony. We're live on German TV now, where another Saxon is calling the action, Kathleen Martini, commentating for German television, watching her fellow Altenburg-based driver and brakeman go on to win their third straight two-man world championship title. So four in three years, in four years for Francesco Friedrich. And uh, he started the season with three straight medals. Yeah. Then he looked like he was just going to wipe the floor with everybody, didn't he? Yeah. In fact, he won five. He won the two four man events, too. So he had five yeah. for five before he slipped in Codexy. Well, you know, we say what a great two man driver he is, and there's no question he is. But you're right. You know, first two four man race wins of the season, it was only Nico Valt who crept in front of him in race three that stopped him from winning. He took the silver there. So he could be a factor in our four man world championship as well. The beautiful Tyrolean Alps overlooking the Olympic city of Innsbruck. We're at the Eagles track and a two-man world championship race to remember for many years. Tied after the final, after the third heat with his teammate Johannes Lochner, the junior world champion. Francesco Friedrich put his nose in front, dipped to the tape to win by 17 hundredths of a second to take his third straight two-man World Championship title. The youngest ever at 22. He must be the youngest ever Number triple 25. champion at 25. He's going to just continue setting records. Yeah, Monty was late into his 30s when he won all his. And here's this kid, three gold medals at the age of 25. John Jackson, Lamin Dean walking down the track with their coach. They'll be racing in the four-man for Great Britain with Bruce Tasker and Joel Fearon behind them. Tasker and Fear on fourth place here. And the crowd have had lots of action already. There's a team competition coming up this afternoon. Starts at 1500 local time, 1400 GMT. And there are 14 different teams involved, each of which features a men and women's skeleton slider, a woman's bobsled, and a man's two man pairing as well. So lots left to entertain us. Some very competitive racing there. So this was Coach Wolfgang Stamford with longtime brakeman Thomas Lamparter of Bert Hefty's team. Hefty taking the bronze medal here in this two man competition. The Germans in dominant form, a 1 2 result for Francesco Friedrich, Torsten Margis, ahead of Johannes Lochner and Joshua Bloom. Uh, Hefty in on the right-hand side, and Alex Bauman. And there's Josh Bloom coming in to offer his congratulations to Francesco Friedrich and Torsten Margis again. And his driver, Johannes Lochner, already in his yellow jacket to stay warm. 
Stunning job by all three teams. John Morgan, really, really competitive racing. Pretty awesome, as we would expect on this Innsbruck track. It's all about start times, and you're looking at the three teams that had the top three start times. Top three of the four start times. Only Keeper Manis had a better start than any one of these individuals. Uh, but Innsbruck, you come here, you better know how to start the sled. But Friedrich was the best driver, too. The two brake men, both in tears. Torsten Margis of joy and Josh Bloom of disappointment. Leading overnight, tied for lead in the third heat. He did everything he could to help his driver. And in the end, even the fastest start in the competition of five flat wasn't quite enough. Friedrich has just that little edge of experience over Lochner. And boy, he better make the use of it while he can. Lochner's coming up on the rails. Yeah. Lochner's a lightning rod right at the start. We'll see him next week, too, in the four-man. He won the Junior World Championships in the two and the four, so he gets a free ticket into... He couldn't make the German team early in the season. why we didn't see him all season. Well, we'll see lots more of him later in the week and in the team competition as well. Join us for that, but for now, from the two-man BMW IBSF bobsled world championships, from John Morgan, the IBSF TV crew at me, Martin Haven, thank you for being with us. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you next time out. Bye for now. Yeah.